Hey everybody, welcome back to, I think it's part 7 now that we're on in this Learn WPF series. And I mentioned this in the last episode, which if you haven't watched the last ones, and you haven't followed along, I recommend you do so. So uh, you can have a nice little project that you can show off and maybe get a job out of it. Who knows, maybe employers will be impressed by this. Um, if nothing else, it helps you learn to follow along. But anyway, I promised in the last video that I would work on styling it up a little bit. I think I did an okay job. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. And of course, uh, you can change it up however you like, either the color scheme or my margin size or font size, font family, all that good stuff. Um, so let's just see. I already did the styling because it's one of those things, and you can see all of the different tabs I have up. Uh, it takes a lot of research to, at least for me, it's not something I, I remember easily is all the different styles and such. And so I have to constantly look things up. But I wanted to go down through with you guys. And let me just show you what the the outcome of this is. So I went with like a blue theme. Blue's my favorite color. And uh, I was looking at the regular calculator. So here we go. Um, and it's got a gray theme and then one blue button. But I wanted it to be pretty much entirely blue, just different shades of blue. And if you're wondering how I got these colors, uh, W3Schools actually has, let me pull back up, I was looking at Facebook stock info, anyway, um, W3Schools has this nice little color picker, and it's W3Schools colors colors picker .asp is the, the URL, but I'm sure you can Google it, like I did. And it allows you to get a bunch of different hexadecimal values of different shades of colors that all originate from this like honeycomb looking thing and so I chose some different blues and I found one that I liked and then I just find a a lightness of the color that I want and then what's even nice is they give you a little show of what it looks like with text in case you're wondering but that's where I got the hexadecimal values and instead of um, just a color value in the field so for instance like background you might be used to it being like a color value like white or blue, but you can actually enter a hexadecimal value starting with the pound sign and then the six uh, character value that you see right here. So let's just go over, um, so yeah, this is it. Uh, we can just go through all of the different things. And another thing I don't think I've ever pointed out, which might be helpful, that you can do, and let's remember this one's F, is you can change it in real time, at least the XAML part. You can't change the code behind in real time and expect it to, to update. But if you have two monitors like I do, you might want to set it in the other monitor. And then you can make changes in the XAML, hit save, and it updates it in real time. So instead of F, let's just put like E. I don't even know if that'll be... Yeah. See, it's not even noticeable because it's so... Maybe instead of that, let's do B. I feel like the first character is the most important. Uh, it changed a little bit. Hard to tell when it, uh, it disappears like that. Let's do uh, E. Yeah, so you can see after I hit save, it changed it. Um, it was B, right? <laughs> was it B? Oh, man. See, that's the problem, though. You forget uh, what it was. And I put the wrong value. Hopefully it was... What's wrong with this? Is this not a proper... Is this the right one? I'll hit save now. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Remember what you change if you're going to do an example like that. But um, Yeah, you can use the hexadecimal value. And let's just go down through some of the things I did. Um, let me just point out the obvious. I put margin in between each button. So now it looks like it's its own button before they were kind of bunched together. And I wanted to make it resemble a little bit more like this with the spacing in between. Added some colors. Added a border around the output, even though this one... Uh, obviously doesn't have it, but I think that looks more like a calculator. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and stop running this, and we can talk about a few other things. And while I, I, I have it in my brain, um, I'm going to plan on putting this in a GitHub repository. So I'll have that linked in the description in case you miss any of this, or I, I miss going over a particular part, so you can look at the styling. Um, but we have, the, at the very beginning, we have this window.background sample. And pretty much what this is, is you can just set the background of the 
window, of this particular window. It's not going to carry over in any other windows. It's just locally to this window. Uh, and you can take a solid color brush and put in the color equals this. And that'll give you the background. And then what I used is this window.resources. I have a video way back. You can look at my channel. It talks about how to style certain elements like you would with CSS and a web page. All right. And WPF does have something like that where you can declare uh, resources is what they call them. And each individual style has a target type. So in this case, it was a button. And this is just every button um, that doesn't have a key. So think of the key as like the class in CSS. But in here, we don't have a class. This goes to all buttons that don't get assigned this particular class. So I gave a margin of two and a background of this hexadecimal value. And pretty much the ones that got these values were all these number buttons right here. And I kind of took inspiration from this, how the number buttons got different colors than the operators. And then what I did is I made a key, or like I said, you can think of it as a class, and I named it operator button. And target type, I had to put button, tell it what kind of uh, element it was going to format. And then the only thing that's different is the background color. It's a little bit different. As you can see, it's a darker blue. And I made the font white. Now, the only caveat with this is because it's, it has a name now, it has explicit key name or class name, if you're thinking of CSS, uh, you have to put it. So let's click on one. And by the way, if you click on a certain element in your WPF, it'll take, it to, uh, take you to it in the code. So you can actually have a style attribute. And then you can say static resource, and then the name that you give it. So that's the name that the key, if we look above, that I gave it right here. So before, I didn't have to put any anything. So if you look at these buttons, they don't have a style attribute, because it's just inherited, because they are a button. Um, but this one says it has a key, and you have to put it in there. Um, another thing I did was the border. So what I did is I just added a border. Uh, I made the column zero and then the span five though I guess it should be four huh so let's try that would that mess anything up no maybe it is five huh oh okay I'm trying to think of why that is zero to five column span okay my, my brain's drawing a blank but I don't really understand why that's five we'll leave it there um, I made the background a little bit lighter than the rest of the blues and then the border brush is merely the, uh, the color of the outline or the border. And then the thickness you can change. I just leave it at one, but if you can make it bigger like that. Uh, maybe bigger looks better like like that. Actually, I like that more. And then there's another attribute called corner radius, which just makes it rounded. So if I take that away, if I put zero, you can see it's, it's square. Um, but I like it a little bit rounded. I think it looks better. Uh, and then, yeah, the rest are just the buttons. And the ones that are different colors, I had to put that style attribute in. And that's basically all the styling that I did to it. And you might be wondering why we keep this main window, and I'm actually going to change that. So let me run the, the program again. We'll bring that back up. Let's change this main window where it says that. And you can actually find that at the top. It's this title attribute of the window. So let's change it to, well, let's not put in caps, calculator. Let's save. And then you can see that changes like that. Cool. And, you know, just to make sure the, the functionality still works, 10 minus 5 equals 5. That wasn't a very good example. Let's do 545 minus 100. 445. Cool. So it looks like it still works. Uh, the clear still works. Let's see if... Yeah, everything looks great. The only other thing I can think of that we might want to do, maybe I'll continue this series, maybe not, maybe I'll just end it here. Um, we might want to put a decimal point, and we might want to put like how they have a negative and positive. So if I put 2, and I want to make it negative 2, I can hit this, and it changes it to negative 2, and vice versa. It might be something we want to do. We might want to do square root. But I think at this point, and maybe I will continue with this, I don't know. I think at this point you get the gist of what we've been doing and I think you're probably able if you've been following along and you got a good grasp of it 
I think you're able to do all of this on your own. All right, you can make your own square root or I don't know percentage if you wanted to. Um, I'm sure that you're fully capable now if you've been following along. So I think I'll continue. I think I will make that negative and at least a decimal and maybe something to fill up up here. Maybe the square root. I don't know. Uh, but I thought I would dedicate a whole episode to styling. Styling's everything, right? The user interface. I think this looks good. I like the color scheme personally, and this looks a lot better than it did one episode ago. It looked kind of bland, right? It wasn't exciting. This is exciting to me. So, anyway, guys, um, hopefully you enjoy this series, and I will see you in the next one.